I'm assuming you know you'll your sub is finished by now and we're on to the next phase which is your environment and we we need to make this look like it's underwater so we're gonna do that with a series of lights and um, uh, if you can you know, you know see the lights dancing around there um, so just, and you can see like um, the little ripples on the surface and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna do that with a combination of environment a floor object on the ceiling which will be the surface of your water and a floor object on the bottom which will be the bottom of your ocean or we're doing like a shallow sea so don't like get all deep sea um, like in your head um, deep oceans really dark we want this to be lights you know like uh, rays of light dancing around and ripples on the surface and things like that um, so we're going to start with a um, specific type of light uh, and then we're going to like build from there. So the main light is going to be um, a parallel spot, which is a big round tube. Um, we're going to do hard shadow and we're going to do volumetric. I don't know if you remember your lighting, but um, each one has a list. Volumetric is physical beams of light. Visible light is this light you can see like a floating orb or something. Um, no illumination means that uh, it's not casting any light. Um, we have soft shadows, hard shadows, and area shadows. All of them may work on this project. You may experiment all you want. I'm just going to kind of go with what I like. Um, and then the type of light. You probably could get away with um, a regular spotlight or something maybe, uh, but definitely not a square one. And then the intensity of your light is going to have to change depending on your needs. We're going to pick a color for your light, which will be blue because the underwater spectrum is blue. You can always click on your color wheel here and you know put it on a bluish tone, light blue. So we're not going into the emo blues or Dodger blues or um, just, you know sky turquoisey, watery pool water, Caribbean. Um, tropical seas type of shallow beautiful blue water okay and then um, under details we have an inner and outer radius because we do a um, a, uh, a parallel spot and that has an inside and an outside um, and the inside is where the light is being cast and then the like outside is how far the light will go uh, and then there's a fade off. So like when you see something like this, um, uh, you see like a circle right here. That's the inner light. Uh, and the beams of light are going to be in the inner part. And then it slowly fades to the cutoff, which is your outer radius. Um, I didn't really put a fall off on here, which I should have, but it's, you know, it's fine. Um, we're going to do... Uh, visibility you might have to play with um, the, the difference between the inner and outer distance uh, that's the length of the light so from like sky to ocean floor we need it to stretch all the way and uh, your inner distance should be like half uh, and if you want to play with the other numbers you can and then lastly, uh, we're going to use what's called noise. And under noise, we're going to go to where it says both and put it on both illumination and visibility so we can see these beams and um, stuff like that. And then we want to kind of match these settings depending on how big your area is. Um, this is going to be like... Um, gosh, I don't think I could show you on this one. Let's see if we can get that uh, subtest for open. Let me find it again. I was kind of glitching up. That's why I closed it. Okay, let's see if I don't know if this one shows it or not it kind of does if you look on the ocean floor 
It's really subtle, but you can kind of see like shadows and highlights moving around. And if you look at the beams of light coming through, these long beams, they're dancing around subtly too. Um, kind of like, you know, you would expect to see. So that's basically what this is doing. Uh, notice that on the main thing here is to stretch these beams out. So we have a strong contrast so we can see them. We, you should probably copy these settings here. Velocity, brightness, contrast. But as far as the visibility scale go, this is like how thick, wide those beams will be and then how long those beams will be. And that's the, the perfect number right there, all right? Um, the rest of the light is coming from, uh, I put a sky object above to kind of like alter the look of the surface and to give it more blue. I have an environmental object, which is why, um, which we're going to use fog, which is the fade off here, which is what well, mine's kind of dark. Um, so, I mean, if I lighten that up, you can kind of see. Oh, I didn't mean, okay. Um, that it won't be as dark in the background now. So you see it got lighter. So that's your preference, you know, if you want. This is what it looks like in daytime when you're like snorkeling or, you know, scuba diving in shallower water, you know, like 20 or 30 feet deep and what the visibility is. So if there was like fish and rocks and a, a giant shark, you know, 100 yards away, we probably wouldn't see it because of the visibility. Um, you know, larger, darker objects tend to stand out, but um, it's, you know, you only, it's clear only to a point when you're looking. So that, that's on the fog, and then you have to find, with fog, is a visibility or a proximity of visibility. So that's this distance here, that's like how far you can see before things disappear. And then you have a strength for your fog, so you just enable the fog. You don't really worry about the environment color, you just go to color of the fog and then we add that, okay? So let's go without the sub, we'll just make uh, um, an environment and then tomorrow I'll make water for the surface. So this won't be finished today because um, there's also water to do, but um, we'll, we'll do our best. So um, I want to just use a, uh, a floor object here. That's an infinite object, even though it looks like it's finite. It's not. Uh, on your computers, there should be a material called Waves, which um, you could go to color and choose like a nice turquoise color for your sand because that's the color it's going to look underwater, even though it's sandy when it dries out on the beach. Um, and some sand is pink. I've seen pink sand beaches. I've seen white sand beaches. I've seen a green sand beach where it's leaf green. Um, there's red sand, there's all kinds of different colored sand, and usually it has to do with the rocks or the coral that's off the coast. Um, but regular sand is like tan or beige, but when it's underwater, it's not gonna look like that because the color spectrum is limited by the water because the water absorbs part of the visible spectrum. So you gotta know that kind of basic science stuff. I mean, you don't have to be like Einstein, but you gotta know like basic science to make your sci-fi fantasy stuff seem realistically feasible, you know, where people are not going to question it anyway. Because there's always going to be some brainiac person who'll be like, sand's not that color, you know, and, and you're going to have to, like, fool that person into not doing it. Um, kind of like, you know, with Iron Man's suit and, and the Avengers. Iron Man isn't feasible. They'd never have anything like that in a billion years. If they did, it would be super bulky, you know, like a giant, you know, fat space suit or something. Um, but it wouldn't be like, you know, this nano stuff that can like form a shell out of, you know, his earring or whatever, you know, or a ring on his finger. That's just stupid. That's never going to happen. But they do it in such a good way um, that it seems like, oh, that's cool. Like, I'm not questioning that. So even simple things like the water and the sand color and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, you got to like question. You got to make sure people don't. Uh, on bump right there, you're going to go over and... Um, click on the button over here yonder. Remember that little button off there to the side, this button right here. That's this button right there is going to be the one where you go get the picture. I don't even remember where I stuck it, but it's 
it should be in your student folder. I think it's called Waves. You might be able to find a better one on your computer, uh, on the internet, you know. There it is. Uh, I like these lighter ones. I mean, it's not perfect. I just, you know, I think I made that in Photoshop a long time ago. But, uh, you know, it's fine because it gives you like kind of like a ripple. So as the current comes in and the tide comes in, it forms these ripples, you know, from the waves. Um, and it's funny, water, wind, will all do that same type of pattern, you know, in certain circumstances. Um, so there's my ocean floor, drag and drop that on there. It's not like super high res, but it'll be good enough um, for a floor. All right, now, next thing is, let's just go grab an environmental object. We'll go and enable fog. Um, we'll go pick a color for our fog. Make sure it's in the blue spectrum. All right, and then we'll go make our first light. So our first, we don't have a surface yet. Um, so don't worry about that yet. The surface is gonna be another floor object. And um, we're gonna also have a sky, um, a physical sky, not just a sky, but a physical sky. And that has the default settings. And we'll just pick like a blue clouds one. And then we're gonna need a another floor object for the watery surface. So I'm gonna lift that up and put that right there. And I'm also gonna adjust my view, okay? So we can see the sandwich. Now, uh, I'm just gonna copy the water from my other file here. And, um, well, you know, make it, I'll make it again. But I, I need it so this looks right when I do the uh, lighting. So I'll put that on the surface. So that's like a transparent, ripply material. If you want to know what that looks like, it looks like, let's go to the surface. It looks like hell. That's, uh, Make sure that's working and not glitchy. It's an older. Oh. Hmm. Which one am I using over here? I'm using that one. Let's get them both. Just to be on the safe side. Well, I have another water open here, and I can always grab these. It looks like this stuff, basically. If, if there's something wrong with that other one, I, which I think um, when I first looked at it, yeah, um, there's something wrong with it. So this this is what we're going to end up putting on our surface, with the sky. But we're going to be looking from under the water at it. It'll just add to the whole effect. So we're, we're compiling things together. Add to our overall effect. Let's just take one more look at it. I, th I think this is kind of jacked up a little bit. Oh, you can kind of see the ripples. It might be that there's no lighting on it right now. We'll, we'll work on that in a second here. I intended on doing that last anyway, so. Um, back to underwater. Um, what it's supposed to look like is this, from our point of view. It's just like a few ripples on the surface, you know. Uh, I don't know if you can see that actually. There we go. That kind of thing. All right, all right. Back to the future. All right, so now we're underwater. Um, don't worry about the crappy surface we'll fix that in a minute um what i need to do is my first light which you know you might want to um zoom out a little bit so you can see everything and you're going to do a big giant 
um, light. So go to light and pick your, you know, lightning's color, light blue. Um, pick your intensity. Oops, sorry. Pick your, let's go down to, uh, let's close the color. Um, intensity, type of light, parallel spot, which is a big tube. Shadow is going to be ray traced hard. Visible light volumetric. All right, and then um, just like I was showing you on this file. So we're doing um, this one here. Oh, I didn't render it, sorry. There it is rendered. All right, also uh, no illumination because we don't want to see and we want to show visible light on all right um so we're gonna put on no visible no illumination so it doesn't cast light it's just visible light that's it's just like you know a lightsaber or you know a spotlight the bat signal whatever it's not physically like illuminating the universe it just is light that we can see a beam of light that we can see you will, like I said, have to play with intensity there um, to fit your needs. All right, details. Let's make it um, really round, really rocky, like Scooby Doo. Um, oh yeah, we want to flip it. So we're gonna flip it onto its side, uh, negative ninety, because we want that blue arrow going down on the P. And then you're going to want to lift it up so it's above your watery surface. You can put it at an angle if you want, and you want to stretch it out so it goes all the way to the bottom there. Your inner radius, like I said, is going to be something that you, I'm just going to guess like 650. You can kind of, I don't know if that will work or not. I probably have to adjust it, but you can see the inner radius. The inner radius which is where the light will take place. The distance between the inner and outer is where it'll start fading away. I'm going to put it on a fall off, just um, linear fall off, and we'll see how that looks right here. So we did these things, inner outer radius, fall off. Next is visibility. We need an inner and outer distance. That's how far the light will stretch. I kind of already set that by dragging it out so it went to like 1245 when I did it by hand. I could just like, you know, round that off to a larger, better number. It should go all the way through the floor um, or be close to touching your floor. If it's not, you know, if it's like halfway, then your light will look weird and funky and stupid. So we're going to go over here and get about 750, 850 for the inner distance. Let's see what that looks like. All right, now you can see the ripples on my uh, surface better. And you can kind of see the tube of the light there. So we need to go under the water and get back in our sandwich here. All right, uh, I don't think my light is blue enough. Blue. All right, so I made it a little bluer. Um, and we'll probably have to do another light anyways. Um, so now we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna go to, uh, we did details, we did visibility. We played with inner outer distance. We play with inner outer radius and a little bit of fall off. Now we're gonna go to noise. We're gonna put it on both, which counts for illumination and visibility. We're gonna put it on um, hard turbulence, but you can try the other ones. And then these numbers here, this is where we have to like get all funky. We want the light to be long 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 so i'm going to put 1500 for my beams there and they'll be like 100 by 100 each 
I'm gonna put my brightness up to like maybe 5% to start. Velocity is how it moves around. This will animate. This is how they do a lot of shader effects by uh, and other like actual undulating, you know, animated water. My contrast is gonna have to change depending. Um, let's just go look at the settings I did on that pretty decent one. Uh, let's see, that's at 22 to 230. So I'm looking at these three things, 22, 230, 22, 230. Mm, I'm gonna have to bring my contrast down a notch. Right here, try, wow, man. Try 40. And then um, the illumination scale might have to come up. Anyways, let's see what that looks like. You're never going to know until you render. All right, I, it's really subtle. Oh, man, I clicked off it. It's really subtle, so I might have to just... Um, I'm going to bring up my contrast over here or my brightness. So you see, like, you can see, like, um, if I rub over it, you, you won't be able to see it, but you can barely see those striated beams of light coming down. Um, I need to be more in the fold here. Uh, so I'm going to go to my contrast and increase that a little bit and increase the brightness and um, see if that will pop them out a little bit more. I also want to be amongst the beams, so um, when I made that light, oh, you know what, everything's so small, that's what the deal is. Let's make that light, I don't know how big did I make the other one. Do, 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 do. by one six. Okay. And then, then uh, let's go do make this bigger. So I'm making my inner outer radius bigger. And then I want to make sure And I'm in there. All right, so now it's just, get, it's a matter of getting the stupid noise part squared away. So maybe I don't want the contrast. Like, I don't know, let's just check out, because I always forget my settings. Um, So I'm, whoops, keep clicking off of that. Alright, let's see. For some reason it's not behaving the same way. See if that helps. Put that up. Might be too close, and a beam is hitting me. Oh, you know what? Let's. Um, 
Let's experiment here, because my original settings are not working. Alright, they're coming through little by little, but I feel like for some reason, let's lift it up, let's hold down, in and out of distance. Alright, you can kind of start seeing them pop out a little bit there now. it helps to make them a little bit um, like the whole light kind of at a slight angle see how big this you can see how big this is so we'll kind of twist it a little bit like that and I might need to um, play around with the visibility or the intensities, my bad, lighten the color of the light a little bit, alright so now they're really popping out, but um, See what it looks like when we're in the thick of it. All right, so it's just you know a matter of getting this to look right um, with playing with your your your. Um, let's make a, an object here so you can see something. All right, so there it's casting a little shadow from my submarine. It's looking a little foggy, but I think my light might be too light. So we'll go down. And I think my fog might be also, so I'm gonna go to my fog. My, dis, my fog's distance is, is weird, so let's, Fix that. Um, I mean, it's 16 minutes. We'll make it like down at uh, 1800. Maybe a little darker. See what that looks like. So that'll help with the contrast and the wateriness. Push it back a little bit. Let's go 2000 and see if that'll work out. This this part is going to be the hardest part. You're going to have to really play with it because it just depends on how you, what color you make everything and, and um, that kind of stuff. Um, my floor. With this on there, I'm going to tile that in to make those ripples bigger. And then um, on the texture for those, um, maybe I'll bring out my bump strength. See, it was getting a little lost in the translation. You can kind of see a little bit of a ripple down there at the bottom now. Um, all right, let's throw this on the surface. I think we're gonna need one more light. Um, back 
to Jamaica here. This second light, is this going to be a white light? Is this going to have an intensity? No illumination. It's just uh, there to kind of like brighten things up. No shadow, nothing. No details. Um, no noise. No anything. Just a regular big omni light. Okay. And so this other light here. Um, like, did I do a color? I don't know. It's early. Um, murmur, murmur. No, I didn't do a color. All right. Thought I might have done blue, but. Um, and maybe you might want to. I mean, the lighting's all really flexible with the settings. You just have to play with it a little bit along the lines that I'm doing now to get it to pop out. Um, so this other second light, you're going to need to have it floating somewhere, um, preferably on the surface or something. Um, and it just needs to be an omni, no illumination. All right, now we're getting some wateriness going on there. I have that sphere, did I? Oh, he's way off in the distance there, no matter. Come back to us. So I just put the sphere there as a, something to go by. All right, so we're almost there. You're almost at the point, you know, where I am with this. I might want to make these little beams a little thicker, maybe. I don't know. So we'll go to um, we'll go to that light, and we'll go to noise, and we'll go to these beams, and I can make them a little bit chunkier, a little bit longer. Nope, I'm losing them now. They're too wide. So we'll go back, maybe 200. It's a little better. Let's go to our intensity and jack it up a little bit more. Let's go to the contrast. Some of my settings aren't responding over here at all, and I'm not sure why. I mean, I haven't restarted Cinema in a while. It might be actually glitching up right there with this um, setting. Let's um, let's kill that light, and we'll go copy the good light and see. I'm curious to see if it's me or the computer that's screwing up here. So I don't want this to go on much longer and be like, this is the most boring video ever, do yeah. So I'm pasting that light in. Oops, did I, <laughs> or I copied the wrong, copied the wrong light. Darn it. There we go. to our experiment project here and uh, 
No, it's definitely... Well, I get some shadow right there. Oh. It's 230, no wonder. For the contrast. I was doing 23. Shrink these down, shrink this down. Alright. Well, I think I just have to fiddle with it. I'm getting it there. I need to have more um, contrast between the beams. You can kind of see them a little bit better now. We need we need those basically. Um, we need those beams. We need them now. And um, also, if you forget to put on new illumination. It might alter them slightly. Nah, I can really do it. See the ambient will help. Getting there, I just have to keep fiddling with it a little bit to get it better. But that is essentially your basic um, lighting. Now, as far as the watery surface goes, um, what you got to do is go to color and pick um, pick your color and it should be pretty dark ish even black and then um, you can go to luminance and turn that on and then transparency and turn that on and then um let's actually let's go to a better water here which i'm going to do this tomorrow but um let's go to that water example all right here we go so we're going to turn on our color we're going to do a transparency, we're going to do a reflectance, we're going to do a bump, and we're going to do a displacement using a shader under surfaces called water, which is for animating. So that'll be tomorrow and we'll wrap it up. Now the hardest part on this project will be getting your lights. As you can see, I fumbled around with it just trying to experiment. Um, we'll be getting your lights just right. And it's not going to be an instant like gratification, but it's the most important part. Um, so if we look at some of these other underwater ones that I have, there's a better example of striated beams. Um, kind of nailed it on that one. We want to look at the settings here. You can see that I did um, same color light, 200 parallel spot. Ray trace uh, hard volumetric. I turn on all this stuff. Um, I got my visibility, I got my details, inner and outer distance. Uh, and then we have the noise, which I did relatively the same as the other one. So I, I'm not sure why I was glitching up or not. So I pretty much gave it the same settings, but it came out a little different, right? So I'm not sure what was going on with that. Maybe if I restart cinema, because uh, I've left it on for weeks now. And sometimes, you know, the memory, it gets a little glitchy if um, you haven't like just reset everything back when you quit and reboot. So that, all those settings may work really well for you, I don't know. We need it to look like it's underwater. You know, if you want to have underwater ruins, 
You can have underwater ruins. Um, I'll show you how to make those. This is the same light. This is the same water effect. It's all the same, you know. So um, size matters, how big you're making things. Um, that kind of stuff. You know, so environmental objects and sky matters. Um, we did a Greek gods project years ago. So the, the, my, my example was Iris, the goddess of the rainbow. And so this was her temple on the top of a mountain. So you don't want to pick gray skies. I kind of try to do a morning thing. Um, you're not, you know, like I could throw this underwater and make it look pretty cool too. And that could be like some sort of underwater goddess or whatever. Um, we got to do our bubbles and we'll work more on the water. So um, we'll, we'll screw around with it a little bit more in class, but that's your essential settings. Um, as far as your water goes, um, like the actual surface of the water, so the water is going to be two parts lights for the volume and then um, a special shader that animates for the surface and then some special lighting that kind of gets it all to look good. Uh, and like, like I just demonstrated, you have to fool with it. It's not going to be instant, but ideally you want it to look like um, like that, okay? All right, so I'll see you tomorrow.